Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hoodoo TV. We have a live event today, and we're going to be talking about the comic book history of animation, a live Kickstarter event that's happening right now. Fully funded, but let's hopefully they can get some uh, stretch goals made. The Evil Twin comic guys, Fred Van Lente and Ryan Dunlevy. Thank you guys for jumping on to talk about this Kickstarter you guys got going on. Cool. Thanks for having us on. Yeah, our pleasure. Thanks so much. Definitely. It's uh, happy to have you guys on. Um, we definitely know about you guys. Um, you know, Fred, your valiant books of Archer and Armstrong, the got right here, and uh, Ivar Timewalker are some books that we hold in high regard. Uh, Josh, uh, both Josh and I. So we are definitely happy to have you guys on. But you guys are doing some uh, a little Kickstarter thing. Tell us uh, a little bit about this. Um, well, we're doing a Kickstarter for our new nonfiction graphic novel called The Comic Book History of Animation. Um, Fred and I have been doing nonfiction, humorous graphic novels for a while now. We started with Action Philosophers. We did. We have a series called Action Presidents that's out from HarperCollins right now. And um, we did The Comic Book History of Comics through IDW. Yeah, there it is. And uh, this just seemed like a natural progression to our next, uh, to our next thing. We love animation and... Uh, seemed like it'd be a good companion to the comic book history of comics. And we decided to take it to Kickstarter this time, which is our first time. Awesome. So, so one question I had about that, given that this is the first time you guys have taken one of these projects to Kickstarter, was why go to the crowdfunding uh, source this time versus going with the publisher? Ryan, you want me to? Yeah, 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 yeah. Fred, you jump on in. <laughs> sure. I mean, um, well, we've never done it before. I had done a, I had kickstarted a play with my wife Crystal a few years ago about Jack Kirby called King Kirby, and so that was sort of a very different animal kickstarting a theater piece than kickstarting a book. But really, Ryan and I started out. Uh, we were self publishing our first book was called Action Philosophers, and we self published that with the Zurich Grant, which was this nonprofit grant that Peter Laird of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fame did. Uh, it's, it's defunct now, but he gave us how much was it? Like, it was about it was enough to publish the first print the first two issues. So like it was about two thousand dollars. I can't remember the exact amount. Yeah, so that was like uh, that was like in two thousand three, and then we took that money. Then we did comic book comics after Action Philosophers, and then IDW picked up that book, and we've been doing stuff for HarperCollins. We're doing some stuff for the city of New York. Uh, but I think we really want to get back to our roots. It's, it's a lot more work to self-publish, but uh, it's, um, it's, it's really rewarding. It's a lot of fun, and frankly, we get to keep all the money. <laughs> so, and it's a, lot, it's a lot more streamlined, too. We can kind of yeah. uh, just jump right into making the comics and not have to, you know, sort of appease – well, not necessarily appease people, but, you know, we're basically the captains of our own ship rather than listening to, you know, dozens of people about what to do. Right. And, it, you know, we sort of wanted to, I mean, I, I, I was curious. I was curious to see how we do. And, you know, knock on wood, we're doing pretty good right now. We're, we're about 130% funded, 135. We've got almost 300 backers. We have 10 more days in the um, campaign. And it, so far, it's been really rewarding. Awesome. And one thing I wanted to get on here, the, the Kickstarter that's going, is the little video. Just kind of get us all tuned in on what, what kind of what we're looking at here. So if you're new to this and you haven't seen the uh, seen the video for it, let, we're going to try to play it now. Yeah, let's go. Fred Van Lente. So, 
Group effort. Awesome. And so, like you were saying, that we're at 13, or you're at 13,000. This, I think, let me refresh this, make sure that that's brand new. Um, and see what we're having, because I... Yeah, we found Oh, you jinxed us. <laughs> so, doing uh, pretty solid here, guys. And uh, it's a, uh, yeah, a solid right. 10 days to go. Um, mm -hmm. And lots of lots of packages. Uh, you guys are about hitting stretch goals. Um, but let's hear a little bit about the book itself. What you guys, uh, in depth of the animation. I know that there's so much, and you guys have done a, uh, a huge number. Oops, wrong one. A huge number <laughs> of, um, of, of research into this. And seeing the, uh, the different pieces coming out with, you know, Walt Disney um, and then huge pieces and especially that Walt Disney image on the cover is pretty awesome. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. Fred's been spearheading the research on this. So, uh, we're doing something that we, um, we're kind of trying to do like a long form biography, which is something that sort of came out of when we were doing action presidents, which we just finished where, but instead of doing a biography about a whole person's life, we're doing some, we're basically treating animation as, a life story and starting with its very early beginnings in uh, the film industry and uh, how that evolved, you know, as Fred, you actually, can you, you can, can you speak about this a little bit more? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'm losing my thoughts. <laughs> All right. You're doing good. I do. Okay. Uh, been a long yeah. time. So basically um, we did the comic book picture comic that was a history of the medium from its earliest days, like late 19th century up with the web comics today. Yeah. Animation actually has a trajectory that almost is the same amount of time, like the first animated cartoon started about the same time comic strips did. But obviously because it's it's movies and not comics, uh, you have to get into science and technology, like where does color film come, come from? How does film? How does sound get added to film? We also have all these terrific stories about uh, where the Disney characters come from, the Warner Brothers characters, Miyazaki, Hanna-Barbera, Tezuka, all your favorites. Uh, and it's sort of a, a fascinating story about uh, how a, a medium started from basically the vision of one man named Windsor McKay, who was sort of a savant in many, in many different fields, including the comic strip field, uh, and how that grew from his Gertie the Dinosaur um, uh cartoon to sort of the massive billion dollar industry it is today and how uh you know cgi was involved how the xerox machine was a major uh, turning point in the history of an animation believe it or not uh and it's fun to talk about these crazy stories about uh you know the flintstones the iron giants uh the gi joe and everything in between you know it's just it's it's interesting because with comic book history of comics what was fun with that was we, you know, nerds tend to be very sort of fetishistic and they tend to be focused only on the things they really like. You know, it's like one guy's into Batman, somebody else only cares about Mad Magazine, somebody else only cares about underground comics. But what we try to do is sort of show how that all beats together. Uh, in animation, it's actually an easier task because it's an, actually a very small field and you constantly find this person worked for MGM who went ended up at Disney, then that person ended up doing Rocky and Bullwinkle at Jay Ward Studios and so on and so forth. So, I don't know. I, I love showing the reader how all these different creative tributaries and rivers and everything else flow into the same big sea, you know, which is the, the whole of animation. And Fred's really great at that. He just, he digs up so much stuff uh, that I've been studying animation since I was in college for almost 30 years. And he, every script that he's been giving me, it just come, is full of surprises just that have come through in his research and all these connections that have made between different schools of animation, different um, camps. And, uh, you know, it's a small, it's a much smaller industry than, than we realize. Absolutely. And, and so you guys have done the nonfiction route quite a bit with the, the two of you together, right? And, um, yeah. And the comic, the history of comic books, and then moving into this piece. Um, how do you think any of this has mainly influenced your other work? Um, well, it's basically the only work I've done that people seem to like, so I just keep <laughs> sticking with it because I've tried. <laughs> I've 
I've done a little bit of fiction stuff, and it just never that it was never quite as popular as this. But I seem to have hit upon something, so <laughs> I'm sticking with it. You know, it's funny. Like I, I started reading Nietzsche. We, our first comic was the uh, the our first action philosophers comic was Nietzsche, and I would probably not have read Nietzsche on my own if I hadn't read Watchmen, right? Which has at least a couple Nietzsche quotes as sort of those end epigrams that that Moore likes to do at the end of chapters, and. Uh, I certainly got a lot of that kind of high pollutant philosophy up from reading Grant Morrison's Doom Patrol, which I loved to death mm-hmm. back in the early 90s. So I've sort of been able to take some of that philosophical stuff and put it in a bunch of my comics like, you know, Magus Robot Fighter. And it, obviously Archer and Armstrong has a lot of like, um, you know, things from various world religions and philosophies that um, – uh, Fed directly from action philosophers. Psylords, which is a series, science fiction series I just mm-hmm. did for Valiant, that was very informed by the Kabbalah, which I wouldn't need to, know, wouldn't have really thought of that much if Brian and I had done a comic about it a long time ago, and I didn't have to like think and sort of turn turn this very esoteric mystical system into something I could understand. Um, the history stuff, not as much. But uh, the animation stuff, we'll see. It's very early on. We just started down on this path, and we'll, it'll be interesting to see where it takes us. Yeah. yeah. Doing, these, doing these comics is kind of like writing a term paper. Like, you know, you're learning. You know, we're not ex- – we don't go into these things as experts. Jesus, just, Ryan, nice way to sell it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> well, actually, we do our work. And, like, it comes out okay. We get A's, you know. We do all right. But yeah, you know, you know, you go in, you do the research, and uh, you know, try to make it entertaining along the way. And we see it now, but in comics, form. yeah, <laughs> right. And, and so you guys are getting in depth here on some 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 key characters in history, as far as just in general. Like you know, I think we talked about Walt Disney, and then we talked about you guys talked about uh, Warner Brothers. Um, what kind of stands out as one of the like the biggest linchpins? into where we are today with the, uh, animation. Well, you know, one of the things that becomes very obvious once you study this is that doing animation is ridiculously expensive and ridiculously time-consuming. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, Windsor McKay figured this out, and he drew literally every single frame of his movies by himself because he was crazy. And people were like, you've got to patent this. This is incredible. You know, people are really going to love this. And he was like, I don't want to patent this. Anyone who's crazy enough to do what I'm doing should do it. And uh, even Disney was sort of pumping all that money into his shorts, but he never made any money off of it. You know, his, he did the, one of his early big hits was this short film about Three Little Pigs, the one of those Oscars, and, and Who's Afraid of big, the Big Bad Wolf was this huge hit as a song. But they couldn't, they were spending so much money on doing prints, and so much money went into the Technicolor and went into the sound. And Disney poured all, the, all of it, the early money into the studio that. Uh, no film ever really made money. So what is important in animation is this concept, and I just read this in a book I was reading recently called Pencil Mileage. You actually measure or your productivity in terms of feet. And so if you look at some of those old Hanna-Barbera cartoons like the Flintstones and even Johnny Quest and some of the higher-end stuff, you know, it's, it's really, to be blunt, kind of cheaply made because you're trying to maximize the amount of... Uh, Screen time you're getting for the amount of money you're spending. And out like The Simpsons, for example, most of that actual animation is done in Korea and out in Asia where they can, where they can cut costs and the exchange rates a little more favorable to producers. So the, the real sort of challenge, you know, Disney did the first really super popular animated film, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, in 37, I think, or 38, whatever it was. And that was the highest grossing movie of all time. Until Gone with the Wind passed it three years later. So so people still want to do this, and they still realize that, like, uh, it's really a situation where it's more love than money. You know, and I think they finally figured out how to make money off these films. But they're still ridiculously hard and time-consuming to produce. Like, if you sat through a Pixar movie, mm-hmm. or something, excuse me, you sat through the credits of a Pixar movie, at the end, as part of the credits, they show all the babies that were born. You know, during the, during the course of the film, that's right. how long it takes. It takes less time to make like thirty humans than it does to make one uh, animated film. You know, which is crazy. What's this? Right. I think I remember Wait, seeing that with Enter the Spider Verse. Right. How that now that was made and just the amount of people that it came in to do right. that. 
So it is um, quite entertaining. But as an artist, Ryan, have you done any animation? I mean, you're doing sequential art, but what about that sequential of art? The old um, school way. I, I, I did study animation a little bit in college. and I made a couple shorts. Um, and then during the whole dot com boom in the early two thousands, I was I was a flash animator for about three or four years, and I did a lot of shorts, mostly for for what was known as interactive television. But thankfully, it's all disappeared now. I did some stuff for the what's W's. That, what's, what's that? that? What's that, son? What's interactive television? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. What's interactive television? It doesn't exist anymore. Um, but yeah, I did stuff for WCW and a couple other things. But it was all done with Flash, and it's. Uh, Thankfully, lost lost in the, in the in the oblivion of the internet. Um, I, I I think I wanted to be an animator, but just never I never quite was able to forge that path. I've done a bunch of stuff for um, Warner Brothers itself. I did uh, I used to my first job out of college was designing T-shirts for for Looney Tunes and, and like Ren and Stimpy and uh, some of the early Nickelodeon cart other Nickelodeon cartoons. And I've done like coloring books and stuff like that, but never any actual real on television animation is a regret but you know comics that's what i'm doing now so you know that's where that's where the, that's where art led me <laughs> so i know that you guys are doing this as a five issue series mm-hmm. each issue broken up into its own little segments out of this question's for both of you but um out of the material that's presented, which is your favorite of it? Like, did you have anything that you have a, a much higher background in or more of a following of you mean in terms of animation? What? Uh, my, my, my clarification question is, you mean in terms of animation that we're a huge fan yeah, of? Yeah, as far as the animation goes, like, is there oh. stuff in here presented in the issues that is just, like, out of, out of the whole era, of the five issues, like, is there any of that stuff that you're, like, a bigger fan of than other stuff? Oh, I'm definitely a huge fan of all the Looney Tunes stuff. I mean, it's it's so informs almost everything that I I, I do in my everyday life and my sense of humor and <laughs> everything. But I mean, the whole history of it is just so fascinating of itself, not just and I've already, you know, I came into this knowing a ton of stuff about about Looney Tunes and the early animators um, that were there and how those reports were made. But um, yeah, what about you, Fred? What is, what is your what have you sort of gravitated towards? So I, because like everyone else, we're kind of quarantined here. I've been subjecting my wife to the wacky races, <laughs> which which if you get boomerang, we're on boomerang for for the this project. Ryan and I are, but I, but but they got wacky races. They got they got Penelope pit stop. They got stop that pigeon. <laughs> Why well, I love that stuff. Like it's kind of terrible, but kind of amazing, because it just kind of distills the basic sort of cartoon concept of. One animal is pursuing another animal, trying to murder them. You know, <laughs> Tom and Jerry are itchy and scratchy, or whether it's uh, Wiley Coyote in the in the in the Road Runner. With Wacky Races, it's all of these cars all trying to murder each other, and they got like seventeen episodes out of this. And I don't know why I like it so much, but I do. I, I love. I I just have an affection for the handle rare stuff. Super Friends was my jam. Yeah. Mm. Primarily because I was just I just had basically superheroes. Like if you popped open six year old Fred's head, it would just be a bunch of superheroes in there fighting. Like I was so obsessed with them as a child. So uh, and I can't wait to do. I've been doing these like Twitter threads on animation history. So I'm gonna do Jack Kirby in animation next. I think because oh, my nice. my other my other big jam was Thunder on the Barbarian, where Alex Toad, the legendary Alex Toad, who did just an amazing number of I think he did some of the wacky racist designs, believe it or not. Uh, he did the three main characters, Ariel, Thundar, and, and um, Ukla, and then Jack Kirby designed everything else. Mm-hmm. So it's really like the sort of perfect storm of, you know... Toad did all those super friends, too. The pirate of, of animation. You know, <laughs> forces all together. It's Pacino, and Brando, and Pesci, and Scorsese. <laughs> and nice. I, I'm a sucker for post-apocalypse stuff. Love it. That's awesome, and uh, and how how current day of the uh, animation are you gonna are you gonna go all the way to Pixar, or is it? Gonna, oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Have to. Perfect. I mean, you know, we haven't written that part yet, so we'll see <laughs> when we get there. But uh, yeah, I mean, it. But it is a history, so we do. I do really like the old stuff, like 
running around with the, with the Edison, going to the Edison Museum and his old factory and dealing with all that. I just, I don't know. I like the origins of things. For what a reason. I just think it's fascinating to know where things come from. And so I just get really excited about that. And at a certain point, you know, I, I think the problem, particularly when you're doing like these pop culture histories, is people in general have this problem where they confuse history with what's known as hagiography. Hey, like the whole point of history is to sort of brainwash people into saying such and such a thing is great. So inevitably, you're going to get people who are going to be like, why aren't you talking more about Adventure Time? Or why aren't you talking more about Steven Universe? Or why aren't you talking more about, you know, insert my favorite thing here? Right. But when, like Ryan said, when you're trying to do a biography of a medium, you kind of have to hit those points that tell that story, not necessarily, you know. Also, it's like, you know, if we just make Ryan draw Adventure Time, we're going to get <laughs> sued because we don't have to write yeah. for that. We have to, like, put something else in there, you know. And, and, and so... So I, I'm really interested in telling the story as a truthful exercise as opposed to just the raw, raw, you know, Monchi Chi is the greatest cartoon who ever lived. I'm going to beat the hell out of anybody who says otherwise. <laughs> Monchi Chi, by the way, is also on Boomerang. Right. Nice. Oh, and God. I watch it. It's insane. <laughs> it's kind of amazingly terrible. Like, if you like getting high, I shouldn't be saying this. If you like getting high, <laughs> Highest recommendation. Of my nice. Boomerang. Yeah. My kids have no tolerance for anything on Boomerang, I, other than Johnny Quest. Everything else is just <laughs> bores them to tears. Johnny I love Johnny so Quest. Boring. I can't believe you're Good watching stuff. all the Wacky Racers. Every episode's the same. It's basically the no. same thing. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm watching every single one. Sober. Your, ex your expectations are low. But, <laughs> it's like, oh, this is no, another no. one. It's, it's got that, like, it's 68, right? So it's got that, like, we're ripping off laughing. Like, it's got that laughing, like, paisley, like, crazy 60s. Um, also, like, the like the UPA, right? That's the, the, the cartoon modern Ryan, right? That's UPA. Yeah, yeah that's sort of primitive. Yeah. Uh, and it's got abstract, and it's got the great uh, Io Takamoto uh, character designs. And it's, I don't know, it's just, there's some purity about a bunch of cartoon characters trying to murder each other for 11 minutes. <laughs> Like, it's just awesome. I don't, I don't know what to say. It's just pure hostility. I love it. And it makes no sense. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, in animation, like, the history of it is, is really interesting. Because, I mean, most people think that, well, Disney was this amazing artist when he was really just a really good businessman that was passionate about it. Sure. Um, yeah. And so it's like that, the truth. So I respect that that's what we're kind of looking at is necessarily the truth, not what the money was written to, to say. Um I appreciate that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Disney's sort of an interesting guy. Like, he, he, uh, he wasn't, he wasn't a very good artist, as he himself said, and he was not really much of a salesman, but what he was very good at was having a vision and then getting other people to follow it. Right? Like, the big quote about him, one of his employees said, was that he was a genius at using other people's genius. Yeah. And there's sort of a, there's a there's a bitter way of looking at that where uh, like an, other animators like Urworks and a lot of people who work for Disney got um, either kind of railroaded or kicked out in the strikes or you know um, just couldn't put up with them. I mean, early on Disney couldn't keep his employees because they just keep kept leaving because these massive profits he was promising never materialized. I mean, it took like a decade from the creation of Mickey Mouse and Steamboat Willie to Snow White, where people really started seeing that he wasn't just out of his mind, you know. And we have a tendency to sort of um, herald these people who of the business side of things, whether it's Disney or whether it's Steve Jobs, or whether it's Stan Lee or whether it's Gary Gygax or any number of, of people creatively who uh, were very successful businessmen to people later said, you ripped me off or, you know, you, you did those sorts of stuff, but against me, but clearly that's a skill in and of itself. Um, and did, you know, Disney, no one believed you could do a feature length animated film until Disney in 1935 act, acted out Snow White and all the parts in front of the studio employees right. to make them really excited about it. So he definitely had a really good skill, but if you crossed him, he'd crush it. 
Right, yeah. And and I, I think it's also interesting to hear you knowing the little history about his parents dying and just how many of his comics or many of his animations had kind of that tie-in with death of uh, family members. Sure. So kind yeah. of very, very interesting history there. And... Um, and then that's just part of it, right? Of the of the animation history, so um, it's just fascinating of a piece to do, just like the comic book history um, that you guys have yeah. told us before. So, well, I mean, Disney obviously Disney didn't, you know, very almost none of his famous films were original stories. He took mm-hmm. mostly from fairy tales, right? Right. Which obviously are very morbid and have a lot of violence and death in them. Uh, or novels like Bambi, which is obviously very morbid unto itself. So he definitely had that type, kind of sensibility of an earlier era of children's literature that were sort of supposed to teach kids how terrible the world is. <laughs> <laughs> Where's mommy? Well, Bambi, I've got some bad news. Bad news. But and yeah. you know, what's funny is when... So Disney would sort of stalk around the studio, which was obviously a huge place, and everyone was, you know on edge and when disney the code words for, for when disney was was roaming the, the studio was man is in the forest so oh, nice then, <laughs> man is in the forest and then everyone would suddenly sit up and start you know drawing more you know because he was the boss you know right. that's what he was good at he was good at being the boss he was not you know a particularly and whether or not he was a nice man was dependent on whether or not you know he showed you favor or gave you the boot you know yeah there's a famous story with uh, where a kid came up to – I don't. it's anecdotal – where a kid came up to Disney in the restaurant and asked him to draw Mickey Mouse. And he turned to Ub Aorks and said, you know, you draw it and I'll sign it. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, and Ub quit not their author. Ub who created Mickey Mouse. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, it's, it's uh, quite wild, that history. And so – and then looking in at the, your guys' book – um, five issues we talked about, and it's going to be about 22 to 32 pages an issue? They're a little oversized. They're around 25, 26. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're all over the place. And, and how far along are you guys in uh, done with the work, I guess, uh, with writing and with the art pages? Um, I'm closing in on the art, uh, the first issue. Uh, Fred has written two, the first two scripts, at least. That's right. Yeah. I yeah. mean, we got to see what the kicks are first. You know, like, we're not just going to, you know... Yeah, <laughs> we're just gonna go right in there. You know. And then an uh, awesome no, hardcover uh, going. Yeah. We're, we're 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 on a nice rapid clip. Most of my anecdotes are from the first half of the 20th century because that's what I've written about. Mm-hmm. And so we're awesome. We're gonna sort of move on from them there, but uh, we're chugging along. We're we're yeah. good for it. We've done we've done easily a thousand pages of nonfiction comics by this point. Right. And Ryan helped somewhat. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> But uh, I think this will be fun because we'll we'll have the, the Kickstarter will uh, it'll continue to deliver once it once it fi- once it finishes once the campaign finishes rather yeah. than like a year and a half later it just sort of shows up like oh yeah I forgot about this so and, you're, you know every two months or so you'll be getting new stuff exactly that's why we want to do the digital subscription and give people the, the issues as we finish them as opposed to making everybody wait until the, the hardcover comes out you know I, I think all of us who've done I love I. I realized my metrics are I've donated to 80 Kickstarters, which kind of blew me away. I just noticed that the other day on the site. Because somebody, you know, you'll come home, like, and there'll be this box on your doorstep, and you'd be like, what is this? Is it ticking? And you pick it up, and it's this this book you kickstarted, like, 16 months ago. And you're like, oh, all right. Why did I want this? Okay, cool, you know. Uh, but this is different because, you know, people who pledge to us, we are going to give every, we are going to send you, you know, the chapters as we finish them. So it'll be sort of a nice chapter book, you know, like you subscribe to a comic as I did in the eighties when I subscribed to alpha flight. <laughs> My first issue was when the minute John Byrne left and I got, God bless him, Bill Mantlo. Yep. And just crushed. <laughs> 16 year old or 15 year old. Actually, how old was I? 13. I mean, it's Mike Mignola on art, right? So right. Yeah. it could be worse. But it was a very green Mike Mignola. I, I lucked out. I subscribed to X Factor right when uh, Walt Simonson jumped on. Oh, there you go. So I'm like, That's yeah. right. <laughs> That's great. So looking at your guys' Kickstarter, 
Uh, I know it's on one of the, the levels that you have for reward is it talks about how you can get a little bit more information on like your research and stuff like that. And I was wondering if you could go into the kind of research it takes to do a project like this, doing nonfiction comics, because it seems like when you're tackling the history of animation, there's a lot that you can take in. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about where, what, how much research you've had to do for this project. None. I let Fred do it all. <laughs> Piece of cake. Other stuff. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, we like to go to places. Uh, I've already been to the, the, uh, the Museum of the Mo Moving Image has a lot of terrific artifacts about the history of animation and filmmaking. We went to the, the, the Thomas Edison, um, uh, factory in West Orange where actually that, that you can see at the Kickstarter page where the Black Mariah, the first movie studio ever was and stuff. And Ryan drew that really, uh, Terrifically, uh, our highest, our, our pie in the sky um, Kickstarter goal is the, if we raise $50,000, we're going to go to Japan. Um, at the moment, it doesn't look like we'll, we're going to get there, but, you know, hey, who do TV reviewers surprise us, man? Let's, let's see, let's step right. up, let's step up the plate, let's go for it. But, uh, and frankly, uh, I'm, I, I'm not gonna lie. Prices are really cheap right now. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yes. For some reason I don't know, particularly to Asia. Uh, so maybe I don't know. Maybe we'll go anyway. You might spend more time there than desired. So. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We're gonna be quarantined inside the Studio Ghibli Museum. So we'd love to go to the. So the three sites I'd love to do in Japan are Studio Ghibli. Ghibli. How I, how do you pronounce that? Ghibli, I think. Yeah. Ghibli. I think it's Ghibli. Uh, and then you can, there's the Tezuka Museum and there's Tezuka's birthplace, which is in Osaka. So most of it's in Tokyo, but we take the train to Osaka. Uh, so I'd love to do that. Um, it, animation is a surprisingly narrow field. I found a terrific book in the big uh, New York Public Library about uh, Windsor McKay, the John K. Maker, who's the great, probably the most famous historian about animation, did. Uh, it's just sort of so shocking how little information there is on some folks. Uh, there's a great book called The Queens of Animation by a woman named Natalia Holt that just came out that I really recommend. It's probably the best overall book about the Disney studio in general. Mm -hmm. Focusing obviously on the women who work there. Uh, and then you watch a lot of movies as as as, yeah. as Ryan can attest. And he's lying, actually. I know you've been watching more than Johnny Quest on Disney. I have. I watched it. Ryan tells me news. Uh, we have the same <laughs> account, so I know what your previously viewed movies are. Yeah. Uh, hope you enjoyed Scooby Doo meets Batman Brave in the Bold. Not my choice. That <laughs> was my daughter. She's like, I gotta see. Oh, this. Now it's All right, fine. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we yeah. watch a lot of stuff. We both we both got subscriptions to what Disney and and Boomerang, and we're watching way too many cartoons. <laughs> more than more than is healthy. So good research. Then. That's good. Oh yeah. <laughs> Plus has terrific uh, selection of mm -hmm. historical. Uh, like all their silly symphonies and stuff. Right. <laughs> Someone behind me. Uh, Some of the great animation in those are not exactly the best. Area. Oh, jeez. Hi, Crystal. What's going on? Um, not, not exactly the best uh, entertainment as compared to other things. I sent my family out of the room. I don't know why. <laughs> I sent out of the room, but you keep back. <laughs> awesome. But I mean, really, right now, big congratulations to you've at least hit your, your goal. And then let's more stretch goals along the way. So um, and I know a number of our viewers do appreciate Kickstarters and helping out creators at this time. And especially this time, it's the, probably one of the better times to get your entertainment and get out because cons may not be happening right now. Uh, they're right. being canceled yeah. left and right. So support creators and do that. And then I have a big ask for Fred. Please make this an animation one day. Get with Robert and tell him it has to happen. This just would be a, an amazing animated series. Archer and Armstrong. So. Absolutely, that would be great. That would yeah. be cool. I could see like that being like an Archer type series. That would be pretty cool. I mean, not to, not to pun, but I mean like the, uh, you know, not to put two foot, you know. Yeah, it'd be a mix close. of Archer and uh, people. Rick and Morty. Yeah, there are. It'd be like right in the middle. You have the, the drunk buddy that's there. It's... Yeah, it could be beautiful. So, I hope it happens. And then, uh, yeah, 100%. yeah. And Josh, did you have any more questions at all? 
You know, I had one last one, and if, and if we're getting ready to end, maybe it's a good question, but I know that you guys have done philosophy, presidents, you've yes. done the history of comics, you're doing animation. What do you think you're going to do after this one? It's a good question. We have about a year to do on this one yet, so it's a little early. Yeah. Uh, the one thing we sort of started kicking around that I would always want to do uh, would be uh, a history of money. Yeah, that would be a cool one. And it's a fascinating topic. It sort of drives all of our lives, and none of us really stop to think about that we humans just made it up. We just made up money. That's not a, Money's not a thing. Right. You know, that exists. Um, and uh, uh, it would be good to sort of show how where that started and, and how it's gotten us to the way we currently live today. That would right. be pretty fascinating, so... So. And then we know Fred, you're writing a lot of books. Anything else on the way, uh, as well as this that you? Yes, but nothing I can talk about now, sadly. Mm. My apologies. Darn. And then Ryan, are, I know I know doing art consumes a lot of time, but do you have anything yeah. else in the works? Just like Fred said, it's a lot of things. <laughs> I but yeah, nothing I can. Well, I guess, we, right I, I guess I'm sorry. Negligence. Oh here. yeah. Uh, uh, Ryan and I do have a series called Action Presidents that's coming out in color in your bookstores and in Walmart and anywhere you buy books from HarperCollins. That's supposed to come out in June. Um, hopefully that is still going to happen, but uh, <laughs> given current events. But, uh, uh, yeah, we're super excited about that. And uh, Ryan and his crack team of, of flatters and, and assistants really did a great job on the colors. and It'll be exciting to see everybody's reaction to it. Yeah, we already had the first two volumes come out in black and white uh, last year, and now we're having those come out in color, and then two brand new ones also in color. Yep. So, in four graphic novels in one month. Maybe they didn't think it was possible, but it is. It's happening. Five. You know, Five, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> at, at, uh, at Comic Book History of Animation. Yeah, if we get it done. That's awesome. Those are good problems to have that much coming out, right? So, um, good problem to have more than enough work, so... And rightfully so. We appreciate your guys' work, um, fans of it, and uh, we do hope that everybody that's here would go and support and uh, pledge as much as you want. The more, the merrier. Let's get them to Japan, but hopefully they come back healthy. Yeah. With a bigger book. A Try bigger, it. awesome hardcover. I love my hardcovers. They all go back there. So, and awesome. um, We'll rock and roll with that. Um. But again, I wanted to thank you guys for jumping on. Thank you guys. Uh, you know, special thanks to Robert Myers for getting us connected, and yeah, um, yeah. having you guys on. Um, appreciate you guys and appreciate your work you're doing. So, and thanks then for uh, us. what? Twitter. Everybody's on Twitter here. I'll put links below. The Kickstarter link is below as well. So make sure you take a look at that. Take a look at those different packages. Um, quite a bit of options you guys got there. So, and I'm excited that there's a hardcover on it. And May is the expected yeah, was... done due date on uh, of next year for the hardcover. Uh, the hardcover's March, essentially one year. From now. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. But but as we said, you'll be getting every comic as you get it in issue number one for, for backers. You'll get it in April. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. Again, appreciate it, guys, and I want to thank everybody for jumping on. Make sure you hit like, make sure you share this, and uh, make sure you're going on to Kickstarter to uh, support the comic book history of animation and other works by uh, Mr. Fred Van Lente and Ryan Dunleavy, um, mm -hmm. and support support these creators. So, thank you, guys. Great, thank you, guys. Thanks. Thanks for having us.